Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Tyrion Lannister did to House Stark. I've been in a lot of debates with Flat Earthers now, but my most recent debate was a very special one. I took on JM Truth with moderation by BM Furble and Team Skeptic. What can I say? JM's performance was so bad that I changed the name of the debate to this. So terrible was his performance that even Nathan Thompson won't speak to him now. So awful was his performance that millions of people around the world felt embarrassed for him, even though they didn't actually watch the debate. So dire was his performance that we are going to take a look at his performance and some of the other stupid things that he says for episode 27 of Flurfs Are Idiots. Cue the intro. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again for another trip down Dunning-Kruger Lane. This week we take a look at someone introduced to the Flat Earth community by Nathan Thompson, the globe-wearing moron that calls NASA employees un-American in a crowded Starbucks, JM Truth. JM has constantly proclaimed that he has the intellectual prowess and qualifications needed to debunk the entirety of science, and then says things like this. Planes would have to, planes would have to land at ridiculous angles in order to even <clears throat> compensate for Coriolis. You could take a plane off and wait for the Earth to come back around, do a big loop, and come back around to the same place you started and land that plane. To start off that today, we're going to have a quick look at how he fared in his debate with me. I want to start by saying that the format for this debate was very specific and set out in advance. You give one evidence for your model, stationary flat Earth or heliocentric model, and one debunk of a common claim from the opposite side. I gave evidence that the Earth is rotating and then debunked the claim flat earthers make that the Michelson-Morley experiment disproves the motion of the Earth. Here, as you can see, is the email that I sent, clearly setting out the format for the debate. Here is the follow-up email to make sure that he read the first email about the format, which he responded to. And then, when told of the format by the moderator BM Furball, he acted all confused like a dog waking itself up with its own farts. And what they've both agreed to is that both participants must present one positive evidence for their side and one debunk for their side. So those are the uh, the terms for everything. Uh, yeah. Do we want to start with JM? Would you like to go um, first? Just just to clarify, we get, we get 20 minutes for our presentation, so 10 minutes for a yeah. evidence and 10 minutes for a debunk. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, okay, well, this will be interesting. I, apparently, I missed it, but I missed the debunk part of it. Flat Earthers, useless even reading an email and following instructions. Anyway, I presented my side with evidence the Earth spins in three axes, demonstrating both the motion and shape of the Earth, showing the effects of rotation like Iotvos, Coriolis, and the function of ring laser gyroscopes and the Sagnac effect. I then debunk the flat earth claim that the Michelson Morley experiment showed the earth to be stationary by showing bits of the actual paper. Then came his presentation. Remember, the format was one evidence for your side and one debunk of a claim. We already know he didn't prepare a debunk, so let's look at the start of his presentation. This is a flat earth versus round earth scientific debate. Straight off the bat, I've got issues because this looks like a start of a presentation I did for high school and I failed that presentation. And then there's the fact that he's got his own name on the first page four fucking times. At this point, my hope for some actual flat earth evidence started to wane. All right, so I'm gonna start with the basics here. What is science? Science is the knowledge and the study of the natural world based on facts learned through experiment and observation. And we're off, instead of going into any kind of evidence or examples for Flat Earth, he moves straight to semantics and instantly forgets the format that was agreed upon and then reiterated to him. Scientific method, the basic definition of a scientific method, a method of research in which a problem is identified, relevant data is gathered, hypothesis is formulated uh, for this data, and a hypothesis uh, is empirically tested. And let's take a look at what he's got on screen now. Here's a definition he has for scientific method and a link to it. He also has this sentence, the scientific method is not a method to support, it is a way to prove if something is real or true. This definition does not appear anywhere on dictionary.com 
and isn't in the slightest bit true, as science doesn't prove things, or try to. Science is the progression of ideas and knowledge, and this is why names like scientific theory are used in place of fact, as a humble acknowledgement that our knowledge may not be complete, and we always have more to learn. Also, that is not how you spell empirically. Science versus pseudoscience. Science is physics, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, technolo technolo blah, blah, blah. technology, and environmental sciences. All the sciences on the right cannot go through the scientific method. This is really not even arguable. So now, JM, instead of presenting any positive evidence for a flat earth, is now trying to redefine what is and isn't science. Let's look at the list he's got there. Yes, he is correct that all the things on the left are sciences, but let's look at the things he's saying are not science. First off, paleontology. So apparently there aren't any fossils at all then, huh? Next up, he's got anthropology. So we don't study humans and human society? Guess not. Archaeology. So I guess we can't study past cultures and technology at all. Hmm. Geology. So what? Rocks aren't a thing? Um, what? Evolutionary biology. So now he's just straight up denying evolution. Great. Theoretical physics. Well, that is a branch of physics, not really a science. And anyway, science depends on the interplay between experimental studies and theory. Next up, he's got quantum physics. Again, that is a branch of physics that describes the body of scientific laws that govern the apparently wacky behavior of subatomic particles. Next up, he has evolutionary biology. Uh, again, for, for some reason. Next up, he's got astrophysics. Yep, so our good pal Neil deGrasse Tyson would definitely disagree with you there. Hmm. Next up, he's got astrology. Yeah, I don't think anyone has ever said that astrology is a science, you absolute numpty. And lastly, he's got cosmology, which is just a branch of astronomy, which is a natural science. Gravity is an effect. It is not a cause. Not, not, not a cause. Okay. In fact, George Mercer, Scientific, America, Scientific American, November 1st, 2015. There are differences between both Newton's gravity and the gravity of Einstein. Now this is fucking incredible because JM knows I interviewed George Musser because clucking warrior Anthony Riley tried to use this same article to prove that Newton and Einstein were at odds with each other. We know that's not true as he said this. No one must think that Newton's great creation can be overthrown in any sense by this or by any other theory. His clear and wide ideas will forever retain their significance as the foundation on which our modern conceptions of physics have been built. But that's not all that's wrong with this page. Let's look at it a little closer. Do you see it? Let's let Ryder a dinosaur show you. That is not how you spell geometry, and that is not how you spell mathematical. To see the full video that clip is from, just click on the link up there. Gravity is an effect, not a cause. Gravity is an effect for mass attracting mass, according to globe earthers. Mass attracting mass, or what your slide says, mass attacking mass, because I can assure you, no one thinks that that is the case. At this point, it was apparent he had totally ignored the instructions I sent and the moderator's reiterations of the debate format. And instead, he decided to go with Eric DeBay-sponsored Flat Earth Manifesto. It wasn't just me that noticed. From Princeton, Martin Rees, fellow of the Royal Astronomy, a Royal hey, Society. JM, if I may uh, yeah. butt in for just a second, I've paused your time. Yeah. Remember that we've got okay. 10 minutes to provide positive evidence and negative evidence. So, uh -huh. uh, so far you haven't provided any positive evidence specifically for your beliefs. Are you gonna, is that gonna be in your presentation? Yes. Okay, yeah, and now this is kind of debunking broadly, but do you have any specific debunks? Because I don't want you to run out of time. Because the the goal. What are you calling a specific say... debunk? What What are you calling a specific de debunk? Because what isn't well? First, that's at the end, right? Uh, well, so far you haven't gone into into any positive proofs for your belief yet. I still don't think he's getting it, and BM is trying to explain, but he just isn't getting it. So he gets some help from Team Skeptic. Okay. Um. Hey. So how much time does he have left, Furball? Uh, he's he's at sixteen minutes. 
He has 16 minutes left. Okay, so JM, I guess what they're just Correct. trying to convey to you so that you understand, so you don't run out of time when you're trying to present uh, evidence. He's saying even if even if this is part of your presentation, that's fine. But we just want to make sure that you don't run out of time while you're trying to provide positive evidence instead of just giving a general debunk of the other side or other people's beliefs. So that we're not at that point yet. So if you right. if you know you're going to get through your whole presentation in 16 minutes, then we'll just stay out of it and let you go. But if you kind of think you're going to be running short, why don't you skip the debunk yeah, no, part I, I for the end good. and lead, and focus on the positive? Okay, go ahead for a ball. Yeah, so I don't think it could be any clearer at this point what the instructions for the debate format are, right? Should we just skip ahead a bit? You all say there's an infinite vacuum of space. That cannot be possible. It defies the second law, first and second law of thermodynamics, and we'll go into that. So the question here is, how do you have a gas pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure, without a container to begin with? Nope, still just talking about gas pressure next to a vacuum and looking at definition of words and taking things to literal. Skip ahead a bit more. So, well, we'll go back to this, actually. This is FM640, no rotation of Earth. Now, I'm open to the Coriolis, which is his, here on this one, but you have this chart that says no rotation and this chart that says rotation. My explanation is that they changed this chart um, it, because it doesn't even match the rotation of the Earth. Okay, looking at documents out of context and just straight up saying people are lying to you. This is just Flurf 101 and no evidence. Skip ahead a bit more. At this point, I think he's only got 10 minutes by now. Two hundred two thousand two hundred and forty Celsius, which is nine hundred and thirty-two to four hundred and forty Fahrenheit. I've yet to hear anyone actually argue this fact because it def this one defies all physics completely to even say the space station's even up there. Here are lead, magnesium. Yeah, he didn't get it. So the moderators had to step in once again. You are at eight minutes, and just so you know, here I'll pause for a second. Like we'd mentioned before, we we're trying to go after specific uh, proofs and debunks because following this is going to be the rebuttal from the other side. And at this point, Craig has about 30 different things he can try and respond to. So I would suggest in this last eight minutes, focus on your strongest proofs to give him something to respond to. That way he's not, you know, doesn't have one sentence to describe each thing that you, you talked about. Gotcha. Okay. I will skip through all, right, all eight the minutes, rest of go. this. And once again, they've explained, and he says he understands. You know what? I don't know why, but I was surprised at what came next, because for some reason, I thought he might actually try and give some positive evidence for a flat Earth. My, all right, proofs. Horizon always appears at eye level. Water doesn't curve. He is literally just showing Eric Dubay's 200 proofs as his one positive evidence. This went on, just a scattergun of misunderstanding of physics, no proofs, no evidence of a flat earth, no model that can accurately predict things. The moderators had to step in once again. So uh, gas pressure. Do you, what, 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 do you have left, what do you have left in your presentation? I mean, do you have something in the rest of your presentation? Do you want to finish this and then we'll pick I, something? I've got a huge presentation, so I'm not going to get through all this anyway. So. Okay. This is a How do you want to handle this? And, you have... and yes, folks, you heard that right. For the portion in which it was 20 minutes that he had to present one positive evidence and one debunk of a claim from the other side, he decided to bring a hour long presentation of Eric Dubay's 200 proofs, all of which have been thoroughly debunked. So BM Furball says for him to give his strongest proofs and back it up with evidence so that I can actually have something to rebut. This is how he responded. It feels like you guys are making this way harder than it needs to be. Honestly, at this point, he'd already lost the debate and he actually started arguing with the moderators. I didn't need to do anything. And then whilst arguing with the moderators, he said this. What is the scientific backing on our side of it where eight inches per mile squared comes from? Where is that used? How is it used? Who developed it? And eight inches per where mile squared is, is our side is wrong. Formula for a parabola. A parabola is the way you measure a curve. That was so wrong on so many levels. A parabola is how you measure a curve. 
No. A parabola is an approximately U-shaped symmetrical curve itself. It is not how you measure a curve. Let's look at how he handled rebutting my point, shall we? I'm going to just quickly remind you what my evidence was. It was the fact the Earth is obviously rotating at 15 degrees per hour. And to back that up, I talked about the Opthos effect, the Coriolis, fiber optic gyros, and Sagnac. I even reiterated these for him before he started his rebuttal phase. And then he said this. So the, my biggest issue is um, one of the things Craig said was about being able to take up these, these stars and things from millions of miles away. And yet I can't take a picture two miles away and, you know, or get a clear picture or even a clear phone um, message without having direct line of sight. Nope. No, nope, I didn't say anything about the stars at any point in my presentation. You fail at even the most basic stuff, JM. Guys, he did so much wrong in this debate. I could honestly be here all day pointing it out. Why don't you guys just go and watch it? It's only four hours long, shouldn't take you too long. Anyway, he makes so many mistakes in some of his other videos, it wouldn't be fair to not give them some attention. But big news, JM is directing a documentary movie called The Plain Truth, out spring 2020. He made a brief trailer for it, so let's have a look. Four times eight, which is 32 inches, to come back to the equator. That is your curvature. Now, if you apply that in the real world, that would be the amount of curvature. Let's take this and put it upright so now you're on top of that son of a bitch. And you're walking forward and you're going to go two miles. You should expect to drop 32 inches in elevation at sea level, which is the equator essentially on your globe. Does that apply to what you actually have happened? Okay, ignoring the random art house filter and ticker noise, what the hell is that guy on about? Should we break it down? Four times eight, which is 32 inches, to come back to the equator. That is your curvature. Oh God, he's talking about the eight inches per mile squared thing, isn't he? Is JM really gonna put this in his documentary? I even explained to JM in our debate that that isn't the formula to measure the curvature of Earth. Eight inches per mile squared maps out a parabola, not a circle. The correct formula is h equals r times one minus cos a, and unlike eight inches per mile squared, is accurate for any distance and takes into account the observer height. That would be the amount of curvature. Let's take this and put it upright so now you're on top of that son of a bitch. Now you're on top of that son of a bitch. What the actual hell? You should expect to drop 32 inches in elevation at sea level, which is the equator essentially on your globe. So this guy doesn't know the difference between elevation and curve of the earth. And what does he mean sea level is at the equator? My God, JM, I can't wait for you to release this full thing. It's gonna be the comedy of the year. Next up, we're gonna take a look at one of his videos titled, well, I think it's supposed to say heliocentric dilemma, but neither the title or the thumbnail say that. Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to share with you a bit of a dilemma that I have. This talk is about Flat Earth. Ah, okay, so what's coming, do you guys think? An intelligent rebuttal to the Globe Earth model or some personal incredulity? Vote here. I'm gonna ask you to use your senses and your observation and your brains to help me solve this problem. Uh, I was doing some research and ran across uh, this presentation and quite frankly, I can't solve the problem either. JM, after debating you and spending time researching your material, I'm surprised you solved the problem of getting dressed in the morning without some assistance. I can't wait for an intellectual defiathan like you to tell me what's wrong with the globe model. Go ahead. We are told by NASA and the powers that be, that the Earth circles the sun like so. No, no, no one ever says that the planets orbit in perfect unison like that. I'm pretty sure for that to happen, Neptune would have to be going faster than the speed of light. The dilemma or problem that I have is that, okay, so this is just a, uh, a schematic of the solar system okay and we'll call this earth because that's what it is and it's just uh, a blue marble 
<laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> You're so funny, JM. <laughs> Where are you going with this? Okay. When we are looking this way at the sun, we are told this is day and this is night. Right? Mm, mm. <gasps> mm, mm, mm. So, daytime, mm, mm. nighttime. <gasps> So, on this side of the earth, and we'll call this springtime. I don't know where this is in the, in the model, it doesn't matter. So, when this earth is over here, we will call that winter, okay? Not that I'm one to point out your mistakes. Oh wait, yeah, that, that actually is me. Anyway, shouldn't it be autumn and not winter, as is opposite what you designated spring? Now, we're able to see the Big Dipper over here, okay? Plus, the Earth is spinning, right? So, interestingly enough, I can still see the Big Dipper, which is supposedly over here. How can I see it through the sun if it's over here? Ah, I see. You can't think in three dimensions. I think this whole thing can be explained for you in the remedial classroom. Off you go. Welcome back to summer school, you muppets. Right, let's get started. What is it, Mr. Truth? A note from your mum? You need time off to film a movie? You're directing a movie? You? But Mr. Truth, do you remember what I told you last time I marked one of your video projects? No, of course you don't remember. I told you that maybe video production wasn't the best direction for you. <laughs> oh no, don't worry. I'm still going to give you permission for the time off. Any reason to get rid of you. Okay, so I've been asked to explain to you idiots, I mean students, why we can see the Big Dipper all year round in the Northern Hemisphere. It's a very simple explanation. It's really far away and it's what we call a circumpolar asterism. That means it's a group of stars that are visible all year round and are relatively close to the North Star in the sky. The Big Dipper is actually a useful tool for navigators trying to find north, as if you take the two stars at the outer edge of the pan of the Big Dipper and connect them with a line, then continue that line above the pan, the next star you will hit is the North Star. Now I hope this clears that up for you lot and you can stop asking such stupid questions. Now please everyone go home and think about how stupid you all are. It is possible on a flat Earth. That's how it's possible. Because on a flat Earth, I'm looking up and the stars are going around this way overhead. But what about when you're in the southern hemisphere, JM, and there is a separate set of stars rotating around a single point in the sky in the opposite direction? No flat earther has ever given me a satisfactory answer to that. But that's all the stupid that I can take for today. I'll be doing a live stream soon going over JM's website for his movie and I'll be back with a new video real soon that's a bit different. Just before I go, I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons. Your support allows me time to focus on my channel and do what's important, bringing you great content and fighting the flat earth. I want to say an extra massive thank you to my $200 patrons, Christopher Kane and Jeffrey Sloan. If you'd like to join and become part of the FTFE team, go to patreon.com forward slash FTFE. And thank you. Thank you for watching guys, if you enjoyed that please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already and hit the notification bell so you never miss anything from FTFE. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flatter. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat.